Okay, in today's video, we are going to do an electric problem, electric field problem. This is number two, and we are going to, in this video, calculate the electric field at point P due to Q1, which is minus 50 microcoulombs, and Q2, which is plus 6 microcoulombs. So I want to just point out that there is nothing right here at this point. This is just a point in space, and there's no charge there but we can still calculate the electric field from the other two charges at this point. And then, at the end of the video, we'll put some charge there and we'll see what happens to the charge we put there. Okay, but we're going to calculate the electric field at this point, but there is nothing there right now. It's just a point in space between those two charges. Now, in order to calculate the electric field, because the electric field is a vector, we have to calculate or determine the direction and the magnitude, and each charge has its own electric field, so we're going to calculate the electric charges, the electric field, excuse me, the electric field of each charge at point P separately, and then we're going to add them together. Now, as I said, it is a vector, so we have to get the magnitude and the direction. The magnitude we're going to get with an equation, the direction we're going to think about what is the electric field, or which in which direction does the electric field point around each of those charges at point P. So let's start by getting the direction of the electric fields from Q1 and Q2 at point P. Well, this is a negative charge, Q1. You should know by definition the electric field anywhere around a negative charge points towards that charge. Well, point P is over here towards that charge, is to the left, so that means that E1 points to the left. Simply, that's the way it works. If you remember, we kind of derived that using our positive test charge, but we said Around a negative charge, the, all, the electric field always points towards the charge. Well, this is a positive tar charge. Q2 is a positive charge. Well, which way does its field point at point P? Well, you should remember we said anywhere around a positive charge, the electric field points away from that charge. So at point P, the electric field from Q2 points to the left. That means that the E1 and E2 both electric fields point to the left. Now that might seem a little odd because we have a positive charge and a negative charge. You think, oh, they should point in opposite directions. Well, in a sense, they do point in opposite directions. Okay, one of them points towards the charge, the field from E1, and one of them points away from the charge, uh, the field from E2. But at point P, they still point in the same direction. Now it might be different if we were outside of one of the charges. Okay, so that would be kind of a different problem, but of course you'd use the same process. Okay, now we know the direction of each electric field. Now we're simply going to calculate the magnitude of each electric field. Okay, we're going to do that using our equation, which we derived in a previous video, and that's that the electric field is equal to K, Coulomb's constant charge, times the magnitude of each, times the magnitude of the charge, the main charge, <clears throat> divided by the square of the distance away from the charge. You'll notice P, point P is separated from Q1 by 4 centimeters and from Q2 by 12 centimeters. That's Coulomb's constant, and now we're going to plug our numbers in. E1, the electric field from E1, electric field from charge 1 is 9 times 10 and 9th Newton meters squared Coulomb squared times the charge divided by the square of the distance. Now I want to point a couple things out. Okay, this is 15 microcoulombs. We had to convert this to coulombs. We couldn't leave it as microcoulombs. This is 15 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, which is the same thing as 15 microcoulombs. We had to put in coulombs because our constant in the coulombs. Microcoulombs, this mu means micro, so all I did was I put 10 to the minus 6 because micro means 10 to the minus 6. If it was nano, it would be 10 to the minus 9, pico 10 to the minus 12, milli 10 to the minus 3. I think those are the most common ones you would see. Okay, also we didn't put the negative sign in. We're calculating the magnitude of the electric field. We already determined the direction. Now we're going to calculate the magnitude, so we just put the magnitude of the charge in. 15, not 1.5, but 15 microcoulombs. And then the distance has to be in meters. This is in centimeters. This is 0 0.04 meters. It's 4 centimeters. We're going to square the unit. We're going to square the number, and we'll get our answer. Now, you'll notice I want to re re remind you we have meters squared. That's going to cancel with this meter squared. We have one coulomb. We're going to have one coulomb left over, and that's good because the electric field, the units for electric field, are newtons per coulomb. So if we do this math, we get 8.44 times 10 to the seventh newtons per coulomb. So at point P, the electric field from Q1 points to the left, and it has a magnitude of 8.44 times 10 to the seventh newtons per coulomb. Okay. Now we can do number two, which is the same, basically. 
Coulomb's constant, the magnitude of the charge, the square of the distance between, away from the charge, and you get 1.0 times 10 to the seventh newtons per coulomb. Okay, so we figured out now the direction and the magnitude of each electric field, and now we can simply just add them up. So I'm just going to do that, summarize that right here. Here's the electric field from E1, electric field from E2, the total electric field, because they point in the same direction, we just add them up. And that would be 9.44 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb to the left. Okay? So we didn't have to have any like negatives or anything like that. They're both just positive, or they're both negative, but both to the left, so we just add them up, both in the same direction. Okay, now, we said earlier, there's really nothing right here. There is nothing there, but we could put something there. So let's put something there and see what happens to it. So we're going to figure out what the acceleration of a proton would be if we put um, a proton right here, okay? Now this, in a previous uh, video, this, not in the previous slide, but in the previous slide, this was, this was 15 and it should be 15. This is 16, but I changed it. I forgot to change it on this slide. This is 15. Uh, microcoulombs, negative. But we already figured out the electric field. We know the electric field at point P is 9.44 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. Now we're going to put some charge here, and then we can figure out the acceleration, the initial acceleration of that charge at that point. Okay, now how do we calculate acceleration? We can simply use Newton's second law, which equals F equals MA, and we can calculate the acceleration. Now I put in here Fe because it's really the electric force that's going to cause that thing, that proton to move. It's not being pulled by something like some mechanics. It's not mechanics. This is electric electricity. Okay, and we have to remember that the electric field at this point, okay, times the charge will give you the force. That comes from our definition of electric field. Electric field is the electric force per coulomb. All I do is I rearrange this equation to give me that the electric force, the force electric, is equal to the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, times the amount of charge we put there. Okay, so we can take this force and substitute it in here for this force. All right, this is the force electric, and this is the mass of a proton. Okay, which we can look up. So we get that our final equation to calculate the acceleration is the acceleration equal to the force divided by the mass, and the force we can calculate using Q. Now, what's the charge on a proton? You can look that up. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So that's Q. That's the amount of charge we would put right here. That's that small Q. All right, times the electric field was 9.44 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. And you can kind of see that if we have newtons per coulomb times coulombs, that's just going to be the force in newtons because those coulombs are going to cancel divided by the mass. The mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, so we just do that math and you get that the initial acceleration. Now it's going to change because we wouldn't be at this point anymore, and the electric field would be different over here somewhere. But the initial acceleration would be 9.04 times 10 to the 15th meters per second squared. Okay, so that's how you calculate the, the electric field between points or when you have additional points. And of course, if you had more than two points, you just add up the electric fields. Now, they might not all point in the same direction or along the same axis, but you just add them up. And then you can think about, okay, what would happen if I put a certain amount of charge here? I think it saves you a little time if you calculate the electric field first instead of using Coulomb's law over and over again. Once you know the electric field, you can just take charge in and out of this place and think about what would happen to different charges. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found it helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.